Hello, I'm Jason with MathTutorDVD.com, and today we're going to begin to discuss the TI-89 calculator. This is the one of the flagship Texas Instruments calculators out there, and it's used in all levels of math, all the way from, you know, algebra and below, all the way up through calculus and differential equations and beyond. It is definitely one of the most powerful calculators I've ever worked with, probably the most pow powerful calculator I've ever worked with. It's an incredible machine, but along with all of that capability comes, you know, a lot of overhead in learning how to use the thing. The truth of the matter is, if you can master how to use this calculator and really understand the functions and to know where to go, then when you're on your exams, it's going to help you tremendously because this calculator can do so many things. Um, I just, I, I can hardly even wrap my brain around it. I mean, you can do everything with this calculator from basic, you know, basic arithmetic all the way through uh, algebra. And what I mean by algebra, this thing has the capability to solve algebraic equations symbolically. It can do inequalities. It can do three-dimensional graphing. It can do uh, calculus and differential equations. Uh, far beyond what most, you know, even computer programs can do. So it's, it's an incredibly powerful tool. Uh, what we need to do is break down how to use this thing in step-by-step -step fashion. And so that's what we're going to work on today. This is an overview section. So we're not going to go into any detail about any of this stuff. We're just going to get our feet wet, try to, you know, get the anxiety away a little bit and try to understand a little bit about this calculator. Now, when you open a calculator and turn it on, if you have a TI-89 uh, titanium calculator, you're going to be presented with what's over here on this screen, which the first time I turned it on, I was like, wow, this is a little bit different, not very intuitive. Uh, basically, the, the titanium calculator puts a menu up here um, that lets you go to various functions. But really what you want to do as soon as you get the thing is you want to go into the home um, icon here. So what you'll most, most of the time do is just basically go into this home uh, guy and that'll take you to the main calculator you know, user area. Uh, you can play around with this and look at look around the rest of the stuff here. There's a lot of other little applications that are loaded here. You you can sort of think of this as your desktop that you might have on your your regular computer. It turns out that a lot of these functions that are here um, are actually accessible from from within the other part of the calculator that you'll be using most of the time. So don't stress out too much about this. I, I remember when I first turned it on, I didn't I couldn't figure out how to add numbers because I I didn't see where I could type in any numbers. But all you need to do is just go into into the home menu and this guy has you know a clock and a, an address book and all these other things that you'll probably never use my opinion so my advice is when you turn it on just it's gonna highlight the home icon just press enter which is down here and it's going to take you to what you're going to be using the calculator most of the time for which is the home screen um, there so don't worry too much about that so that's what we're going to do here we're going to get down to the home screen this is where you're going to really use the calculator now it's intimidating at first. You've got all these keys here. You've got a very complicated screen with a menu, lots of things here. And if you don't know where to find the functions, then this calculator can be very difficult to use. So let's take a quick tour of the interface and uh, just go from there. So what we have here is a, is a ton of keys. You have the most familiar part, which is the number keys down here. And you can just type in, you know, 45 down there. You see the, the numbers are starting to pile in there and you can subtract a number from that and when you want to evaluate something you know whatever you have put in here is what you're going to evaluate the enter key is, is effectively like an equal sign it it tells the calculator to go ahead and evaluate what you have so when you hit enter then what you were typing in just a second ago pops up here in what we call the stack and then the answer is over here on the right hand side so everything you type in here let's type in 41 minus you know 8 and we hit enter again then 41 minus 8 is going to go over here because that's what we put into the calculator. And then over here is what's going to be spit out. Uh, okay, so you know you can go 8 times 5. And you see as you, as you do this, it continues to push the last thing that you typed in up uh, there. And so if you, if you put a bunch of different calculations here, let's go ahead and just add a bunch of stuff together and push it up off the top. Um, to, you know, 2 minus you know, 5 get negative three over here then you see it starts to scroll off the top but if you need to go back and reference what you were doing before you can just use the cursor and you can just go right back up here and look at it and then when you're done with that you can go right back down and scroll yourself down to the input area down here now 
one thing that you need to just kind of get used to is that when you type something into this calculator, 2 plus 3, right, and then you hit enter, it's going to go on onto the stack and the answer is going to pop up on the right hand side. The right hand side is always where the answers end up. The left hand side is what you typed in. Now after I typed it in, it automatically puts the last thing that I typed in onto the stack again and it's highlighted for me. If I just type something different, it basically deletes what was there, uh, you know, just like a computer might do. You highlight something on a computer and then type a button, it, it just deletes it. But every time I put something in, it sticks the last thing I entered over here. And that's because, um, you know, maybe I'm doing a complicated calculation and I just got the answer, but maybe I want to just gently modify the answer. So it's going to put what I just last typed in. Maybe I want to hit the right arrow take that highlight off and maybe I want to modify this, you know, times eight or something like that. And then it's going to evaluate that, put the answer. And again, the last thing I typed in is going to be highlighted. So it's a very handy feature if you, if you are, uh, you know, basically entering a bunch of stuff and maybe you need to make quick modification. Maybe you're doing a calculation um, of something that's very, very similar, but you're inputting a bunch of different numbers. So you could just continue to put it in there and just modify modify the last thing you type. Maybe instead of times eight, maybe I want to do times nine. Uh, you can hit the backspace key here, this little arrow that's just functions just like a computer and you can change it. So I'm giving you a basic idea of text entry here. You, you put the things in here, the answers pop up on the right hand side. You can hit uh, you can hit a backspace You see how it erases that one. I hit it again, it goes backwards again, I hit it again. Maybe I want to put something else in its place. It functions just like a computer. Now the clear key does what you might expect it it clears the whole line uh, and in fact if I go up here to the stack here and just start hitting the clear button maybe I'm tired of looking at all, at all of this stuff I can hit the clear button and it's basically going to start deleting that entire line until I get down to where everything's cleared again so the clear button is your friend it's basically functions like a delete key um, the backspace little key here is functions like a computer you're going to use that all the time and just think of this as a stack. As you type things in, it gets pushed up. You can see everything that you, uh, that you typed before. It's like a sheet of paper. So you can go scroll back and see what you did before. Um, now, notice down here in the corner, there's 0 slash 30. When I put something onto the stack, this becomes 1 of 30. So that means I have one thing on the stack. When I put something else, I have two things on the stack. If I, you know, if I uh, say, you know, 8 times 8, I have three things on the stack. Well, there's only 30, um, 30 uh, spaces in the stack. So if I keep pushing stuff on there, eventually I'm going to get to the point where I run out of space and I can continue calculating. It's just that everything at the top is going to start to fall off the stack. So if you put too much stuff into the stack, then, then you only have a history of the last 30 things you put in there really is the bottom line. That's what this means down here. So let's continue talking about the display. We have uh, these function buttons at the top, F1, F2, F3, F4, F5. These are function buttons that correspond to the menu that's up here at the top. So if I press F1, then this menu pops up down here and I can use it just like a computer. We'll talk about when you need to use it here and, on, and so on. Um, notice that some of these entries in the menu are kind of, you can't really read them. Anytime you see something that you can't read in this calculator, it just means that this function, whatever it is you're looking at, is not available now. And in whatever mode you're in the calculator, you, you can't do option one or option three. And so that's why it's grayed out. The other options are, are, are possible. One more thing I'll say, if you wanted to go, let's say, and uh, you know, save a copy as, you could hit enter here and that would work, but you could also hit the number two. So any of these numbers in the front will, will activate uh, this guy. So if I uh, want to get out of this menu, I have to use the escape button. And so that pops me right back out of there. So the escape button is going to be used all the time. Anytime you get into a menu, you're going to hit the escape and pop you out. So here's F2. I've got an algebra menu here. I've got a bunch of solvers things. And if I want to, you know, uh, solve an equation or something, I'll go here and I'll hit enter or I could press a number one. And it's going to put that onto the stack and I'll fill in between the parentheses everything that I need uh, to do that. And I'll be able to use that function. You know, F3 is a calculus menu. You can do your differentials and uh, derivatives and integrations and all these other functions here. And there are more functions even down below number eight. Um, 
other you can also hit escape just like I said to pop out of the menu but when you have these menus down like this you can just hit the left and right arrow keys to scroll through the menu it's a very very good way just to get to, to look and see what's here uh, so F4 is just a miscellaneous menu this is a, a, a programming menu this is a cleanup menu so you have F1 F2 F3 F4 F5 to get to F6 you have these this blue F6 here, F7, and F8. So this is a good time to discuss the different colors on the calculator. There are too many functions in this calculator for the number of buttons we have. So every button really has three uh, functions associated. You have what's printed on the button, and then you have something in blue that you need to use the blue button, the second function to get to. So if you wanted the natural logarithm, you'd have to hit blue, and then this button down here for natural log, and it pops it on the stack like that. Let me clear that out. And then over on the right hand side you have a green one that functions the same way. If I want to raise something to uh, e raised to the something, I have to hit the green button and then down here to bring e to the power of, you know, two, let's say. Close the parentheses off and I've got e squared there and I hit enter and it pops out with, with e squared and, and the reason that it stays as e squared is because of the way we have the mode set up in the calculator. We're keeping it exact. We'll talk about how to how to tell the calculator when we want to keep it exact like this and when we want it to evaluate as a decimal. So once you understand how the colors work, the calculator really becomes manageable because you can see as you go here, you've got your F1 through 5. If you want to get to F6, which is the cleanup menu, you hit second function and then this button for F6 and here you go, pops up. If you were ever in a menu that had an F7 or an F8, then you would use those. Uh, now this is a graphing calculator. So you're probably going to be graphing things pretty fast. You see up here at the top the Y equals, the window, the graph, the table set, and the table. These are all used for the graphing features of this calculator. So if you hit green and then F1, you'll be taken to a place where you can input whatever equations you want to plot. Um, so we're going to get into an entire you know, series of videos on how to plot with this calculator, but let me just show you how easy it is. If you want to plot Y is equal to X squared, just hit X which is this button here and if you want to square it raise it to the power of 2 so this is like the exponent button so y of x is equal to x squared so we'll hit enter and it, it puts it in the space for y1 now you can input you know more than one equation you could put five or six equations here but this is the one we have now we we want to graph it so we have to go over here to the graph mode whatever is in here for the equations is going to be graphed so we hit green button and then graph up here and it takes us to the graph and it thinks for a second and then it begins to draw a nice graph for us. Now notice in this menu now that we're in the graphing area of the calculator our, our menu at the top has now changed. There's no algebra menu, there's no calculus menu, there's, there's none of that stuff. These are all menus related to the graphing function. So if you hit F1 you've got you know basic open and save like on a computer You've got a bunch of zoom functions we'll talk about later. You've got the ability to trace uh, the coordinates. Uh, you've got a math menu here that lets you do all kinds of things like even take derivatives. You've got a draw menu that'll let you draw all kinds of things on this graph. And you've got a bunch of other things here that let you draw cool things here. And if you want to pop out of that menu, just hit escape. Now if you're doing a graph or if you're anywhere else in the calculator and you want to go back to that main home screen then the home button is going to be your friend just press home and it takes you right out of there if you want to go back to your graph to look at it you just hit the green button go back up to graph and whatever was graphed before is going to still be there so you don't have to really graph it again it's whatever is is currently graphed is going to always be there and you can go back and check that out so you'll hit home so we've hit the top guy here we got the keypad we've hit the the blue and the green button we learned about escape uh, we learned about the home button this button the mode button is very important we'll talk about it in great detail this is telling you all of the different modes of the calculator this is where you for instance um, set the uh, number of decimal places the, for the calculator or to set your scientific notation mode and all these things that you have to to set to tell the calculator how to operate are you in radians or degrees so if you want to go here it's highlighted radians to change it you just hit the right arrow like it's telling you to do and you're presented with a drop down you can press the number or you know whatever if you wanted to change it to degree go down to degree and hit enter it's going to change it to degree and this is telling you enter is saving this escape is canceling so if we hit enter then we're now in degree mode 
and you can actually see that at the bottom. This is uh, kind of telling you this we're in degree mode right now. Funk means we're graphing functions rather than, for instance, um, polar plots. We're not graphing polar plots or three-dimensional plots. We're just graphing regular functions. This is the stack counter telling you what's on the stack. We talked about that. Uh, auto, something we'll talk about later. That's the basically the accuracy mode of the calculator. So it's giving you a little status down there. Uh, okay, so we've talked about this. Uh, the apps button is basically going to take you right back to where you were uh, when, when if you have a titanium calculator where you can see all of these applications that you have installed uh, in your calculator sort of with an icon if you don't have a titanium calculator you still have ability to put applications on there it's just not going to give you this little desktop looking thing it'll be in, in a list sort of thing the catalog button we'll talk about later let me hit home here uh, it's it's basically a master catalog of all the functions in the calculator this is a backspace button. This is the clear button. You have insert and delete, just like you might think on a word processor. We'll talk about that later. Uh, these are the trigonometric functions, sine, cosine, tangent, and their inverses. Uh, here you have some variables that are, you're going to use a lot. Uh, so they have dedicated buttons. Now all the other buttons on the calculator have letters above them. So you see D is here. Uh, here's E, here's F, it's kind of hard to read, G, H, I. To get to those, you have to hit the alpha button. So if I want to put B, I would hit alpha and then this button, and it would put a B on the calculator. We'll talk about when you would want to use any of those alphanumeric things uh, later. It turns out you can use them all for variables. You can store variables in any of those things. Uh, you've got equal sign here you'll use to input equations. You'll have parentheses. So obviously, you're going to use parentheses all the time in algebra. In calculus, you have brackets of every type above here in blue. Uh, you've got your square root over here, and you've got an integral sign. This is for d for derivative, and there, you know, there's a lot of things here. Now, this is an important button. This is the uh, uh, to put scientific notation. And so, if I wanted to put 1.2 times 10 to the 5, this would be times 10 to the 5. So that's what the e button means. 1.2 times 10 to the 5. I hit enter. And you see it's converted it for me. And again, that's because of the mode of the calculator. I've told it in the mode menu uh, to, to represent everything, uh, in, you know, instead of leaving it in scientific notation to put spell it out like this. So that's why it looks like that. But this is how you put in scientific notation. Uh, this button is for storing variables. And of course, to turn the calculator on is here and off is in blue. So you have to hit the blue button. It's a pretty good... Uh, it's a pretty good uh, overview of, of the calculator. There's a couple of really important things down here I want to mention. Probably one of the most important menus on this calculator, other than the big one that's up here, is the math menu down here in blue. So hit second function blue. We're going to go all through this during the course, but basically you have a ton of menus under number, for instance, hitting the right hand arrow. You know you have absolute value here. You have rounding functions. You've got floor and ceiling, things like that. Hit escape to get out of that submenu. Under angle, for instance, you've got uh, changing from polar to rectangular and things like that. Under, for instance, matrix, if you hit this guy, you've got determinant, transpose, uh, identity matrix, lots and lots of different things. You've got uh, menus for statistics and probability. Uh, you know, and, and algebra and trig and calculus and hyperbolic functions and all kinds of things. There's just a ton of menus, a ton of different functions in this calculator uh, to explore, and we'll get there one by one. But the math menu is your friend. If you don't see a button on this calculator uh, and you don't see it up here anywhere, then go check the math menu first. If you can't find it there, go into the catalog menu. The catalog is really sort of every single function that this calculator has, including the functions you won't use very often, like the, the functions used to program the calculator. So if you really can't find it anywhere else, it should be in this in this catalog menu. So we'll, we'll talk about how to use that a little bit later on, but I just wanted to, to tell you that now. One more thing I want to tell you before we close this introductory section is how easy it is to use the recall functions of the calculator. Let me go and clear this whole stack off so now we're clean. Let's do some basic calculations. Nothing nothing crazy. We'll say 7 times 8 and we'll hit enter and it'll put us into 56. Let's do 4 times 9. Let's hit enter and we'll get uh, 36 and let's just do you know 1 divided by 5. 
and we'll put that in. It's going to leave it as one fifth because it's trying to keep an exact exact representation of, of what I type in right now. That's how I've got it set up in the mode menu. Now, let's say I just type in one fifth, just like I did one divided by five. And I want to take the last answer that I have and, uh, and do something with it. Like maybe I want to take one fifth and multiply it by two. Well, I know I just got one fifth as the answer. That's what I typed in. If I want to multiply by two, if I hit the multiply button, the calculator is smart enough to take the last answer. That's what this is, the one fifth and multiply it by two. So I hit enter. I'm going to have two fifths. Now, the last answer that I currently have now is two fifths. So if, if I take this and uh, let's say multiply by uh, by two again, I'm going to hit this. It's going to take the last answer that I just got, multiply by two, and then I'm going to get four fifths because I'm multiplying by two. So the bottom line is when you're dealing with this calculator, whatever the last answer you got is automatically going to be used if I start a new calculation. Uh, so if I say four times five, I'm going to get 20. And if I just go ahead and hit the divide button now, it's going to overwrite what's here and say, okay, I'll take the last answer and I'll divide that by four. And then I'm going to get five. And this is my last answer. Now, if I start a new calculation and say maybe, you know, four times one and hit a four times one, then obviously it's not going to use the last answer for anything. That only comes into play when I get an answer and then I just go ahead and start a new calculation you know, without typing a number. So I might just hit the minus sign. It'll say last answer and the parentheses one means uh, the very last answer here. The, the, first, the first guy closest to you um, minus four and it'll put a zero out. Now let me show you something else cool. Let's say you're doing a string of calculations and the, the answer that you got up here is the one that you want to use in a, in a subsequent calculation. So just hit the up arrow and go and highlight the 20 right and then you hit enter and it's going to put 20 down here and then I can say subtract 5 so this is really simple for numbers because you could just type in 20 again but if I were doing a complicated integration and I, or a complicated algebra thing and I had a big long polynomial up here it would be much faster just to go up here and highlight that polynomial and hit enter it'll push it onto the stack for me and then I can do whatever I want maybe I want to multiply that polynomial times X and I'll hit enter so see it has 4x now Well, maybe I'm multiplying that polynomial by something and I want the calculator to do that work well, I can go up there and do that now the same thing holds true of my inputs if I'm if I see okay here I had 20 divided by 4 let me go up and highlight 20 divided by 4 like this and I'm going to hit enter so it's going to put 20 divided by 4 in the stack maybe I want to change that to 20 divided by 5 so I hit backspace and then 5 and then I hit enter so I'm able to go back and take anything that I type into this calculator, push it onto this evaluation area, change it, and make a new calculation. Uh, and I'm also able to go and grab any answer like this one, put it onto the stack. That's an answer that I got. Maybe I want to multiply by x again. So I'm going to get that, and it's going to put 4x squared. So see, it's already using the algebraic. It knows that x times x is x squared. So you've got that here. So keep in mind that as you're using the calculator, Anything that you get as an answer can be used very easily in a subsequent calculation and anything that you typed in can be used in a subsequent calculation. Uh, so if I wanted to say, oh, don't, I did the wrong thing. I didn't want to do four times X times X. I wanted to do four times X times Y. Let me put a Y here instead. So then I'm going to have four X Y instead. Uh, very, very, very interesting, especially when you're doing things like integration or differentiation. If you, you want to tweak the function a little bit and see what happens, then just pull that sucker right down off the stack and uh, make a quick alteration to it. Hit the enter key again and off you go with a new evaluation of something without typing a bunch of stuff in. Okay, I think that serves as a good overview of the calculator. You know, it's a complicated looking machine and it, and it does have a ton of functions. But if you learn how to use it, it will really improve your game in school because you'll do your work and you'll be able to use this calculator to check your steps and to check your work and you'll be so confident that you won't waste time um, on your test. So I'm Jason. Uh, you should not have at this point a warm fuzzy feeling of how to use this calculator for everything, but at least now you know how to do basic calculations. You know how to interact with the stack here. You know how to get around the menus. As we go through the subsequent sections, we're going to cover all of these functions in detail, give you tons of examples so you get really good at the TI-89 calculator.